all right it's your boy ttk we're back with another video today we're going to be analyzing the only game we have so far for the monotype premier league semi-finals we got style.css uh, versus scarfire here and uh yeah style.css is my teammate on the hunch crows team for the mpl semi-finals and yeah this is the only game that's we played so far and it's like pretty much almost the weekend now so i was just like I didn't know what videos to make because at the same time i don't want to ladder like i'm not laddering with monotype until this tournament's over i can't I, I'll, I'll be honest because i'm just like <laughs> these guys are gonna see what sort of shit i'm using i'm like i need to bring some of this stuff to tour so i'm not going to be laddering anytime soon but like as much as i'd love to ladder i'm not doing it right now but once mpl's done and everything like that uh laddering videos will come back for monotype but regardless uh i basically wanted to talk about this game because i'm just like a lot of people you know they want to get good at monotype they kind of want to know how to improve or how to play like this tier because sometimes like monotype is just a different tier from uh, you know usage based formats and you're you're approaching the game differently so i kind of just want to show you a perspective of that sort of thing going on so uh yeah we'll basically be going over this game uh, and it's not even like a fire versus water matchup or a ground versus grass matchup like dragon versus fighting is pretty even and seeing these sort of even matchups where you know you can't really blame matchup for you winning or losing um you know there's more nuance to this so that's why this is probably the best example of a game that i can show you but either way before we get into talking about this replay leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel join the kingdom we're on our way to 1000 subscribers by the end of the year so yeah much appreciated but either way starting to look at this matchup um you know just from preview i think preview is very important when you're playing a tournament game uh regardless of any tier that you're playing uh preview is always important because you get to see the sort of mons uh, that the opponent is bringing obviously and you can obviously make assumptions which you know is part of playing the game like if you play a certain tier enough you'll make assumptions about what sets they are and you'll start to make a plan a game plan around the match that you're playing depending on the sets that you assume so yeah like monotype is easier to do so because you know you're running you have six slots six competitive slots and at this point like on fighting for example you have the designated slot you have the poison fighting type because you know with that defensive type you're neutral to fairy and you can hit fairy super effectively you have tusk because you know it's the only rocker or one of the only rockers and like is one of the only consistent spinners we have iron valiant because the typing is just good having a fairy type is also pretty useful then obviously zamazenta zamazenta it's pretty fast and uh iron defense body press is a very questionable set so you know like that's four slots on fighting already gone and then like obviously you have like the, what's most likely the av Gallade and urshifu whatever set that's running that could also be a keldio that could also be a breloom depends on what matchups you want to cover and things like that that just comes from playing monotype for example and obviously style on his side he should just know what most of these are running like you're never gonna really deviate away from the spin rocks task or scarf sneezla for example well you know this could also be scarf which we'll find out soon enough later this game that it was scarf zamazenta but yeah you can just make uh, assumptions and the same can be said for styles team as well you know you have a garchomp which is typically like rocks or spikes galgen is dd roan moon is either uh, banded or choice scarf our challenge is going to be fizz death like you know in monotype it's just kind of easy to tell what each types uh what every type is basically running in terms of the sets and in terms of the mons but yeah that's enough about me yapping about the matchup but again this is a pretty important thing to take note of when you're playing monotype for example or just any tier in general just to assume and start from that game plan so either we're gonna start the game here and style leads off with garchomp versus Gallade here and like at that point if you're not used to playing monotype you'll be like oh no Gallade's gonna be running triple axle or, or something like that no he's not running triple axle the assault vest set typically runs psycho cart sacred sword uh shadow sneak and uh night slash I, uh, yeah i'm pretty sure i said both stabs so yeah that's typically the moveset that is running so like most of the time either garchomp can just go for eq or can just start getting up hazards but you know uh scarfire has responses you know uh, the Great Tusk is bulky enough to not really care about Garchomp. Urshifu could also be a switch in as well. But again, you probably don't want to switch that into Earthquake. So obviously Great Tusk can also just rapid spin away as well. So, you know, there's uh, some things to consider here. But uh, Scarfair takes the more riskier offensive route by going the Valiant on Hazards. 
which is pretty strong because obviously you have a fairy type versus dragon especially the fact that you're not running a hisui gudra so you know iron valiant can easily click like a choice specs moonblast of his choice specs and uh you know there's no switchings so um yeah very dangerous position for style.css to be in but you know scarfire took the initiative here offensively to you know get their breaker in which obviously has a type advantage and you know sometimes you have to play offensively sometimes you know you can play safe and i guess they felt comfortable playing safe because they knew that garchomp would probably start setting up the hazards so yeah um ice punch um you know comes out and uh you know gouging fire could have been the switching but style.css does not want to you know risk you know that gouging fire taking the specs moonblast and obviously you don't want anything else to be taking damage because obviously you have a latias in the back and you know latias is a psychic type versus fighting so uh, you definitely want to keep that and then you also have Dragapult, which is immune to fighting. So you have to keep your wing cons alive, and Garchomp was the least valuable member of the team. It already got one spike, which is enough for fighting, you know. Like, rocks isn't useful against fighting because obviously fighting resists rock, but, um, you know, one spike is taking 12% off of these guys. So, you know, that's a pretty important spike that Garchomp has done, and his usefulness has been uh, expired here. So, obviously, Dragapult comes in and his choice specs, and, uh, you know, obviously, Scarfire doesn't know that, but obviously, Urshifu has to take the brunt of the attack here. And uh, they go for Aqua Jet because, again, they have no switching, it's the Shadow Ball. So, yeah, Urshifu's down, uh, unable to do anything this matchup whatsoever. So, Great Tusk comes in, and, uh, you know, Great Tusk can take a lot from Shadow Ball, but it probably survives on some stuff. So, you kind of have to switch in something. Here, like again like tusk has the moves to you know hit dragon really hard like if it could knock off there and you're like oh latias is gonna come in and um yeah latias is gonna come in you can't really let it take a knock off or ice spin or any move that hits it super effectively so our chalodon obviously the steel type is not gonna be that useful against the fighting type so again it's a situation where style.css is realizing that you know the ones that are you know weak to fighting aren't going to be the most useful here but Rowan moon starts the speed tier so you probably want to keep that in the back but yeah our chalodon um you know takes the hit uh decently well but headlong rush comes out again and uh you unfortunately die there so yeah um you'll be seeing this situation turn six your two mons down and uh yeah it doesn't really seem that good but um style.css made a pretty aggressive play here by going latias and anticipating the galade to come in to go ruin moon now this ruin moon is choice banded and uh you know you'll come to see that um this great tusk actually isn't as defensive as, uh, defensive as it seems because it takes 39 from a banded EQ and that's a whole lot of damage. So that's not even a physically defensive great task. But, you know, um, um, so you're wondering why the Sneasel is coming out here. Like, even though, uh, you know, it was just in on a Ruin Moon. Now, the Sneasel is Air Balloon, so Scarfowl anticipated you to just click EQ again. Because as you can see, um, with this great task here, um, it's HP. It was at uh, 37, so obviously Earthquake was going to kill. And they have no ground immunities. Now, you could say they could have just gone Zamazenta here instead of, like, the Sneasler. But, um, you know, I guess they didn't anticipate the Latias double. So, either way, um, you know, you're in this situation and Sneasler is forced to swap out. And you're slowly getting chip on this Assault Vest Gallade. Because, obviously, Gallade is neutral to Psychic thanks to its Psychic Typing. And, uh, yeah, you don't want to stay in on that. So, like, Night Slash comes out and... Um, you know they anticipate the night slash because night slash was going to do good damage to uh latias here obviously so uh ruin moon cave if they predicted with uh sacred sword then well played we would have been in a much worse situation i'll be honest but um you know night slash comes out and you get the ba uh, banded ruin moon in again that which eq is able to kill great tusks is going to do um you know significant damage to valiant and uh yeah so at this point um they go great tusk and yeah great tusk just gets sacked here you know um with facade now i don't know if the crit probably didn't really matter but the great tusk revealed itself to be helmet so it doesn't really matter and in this situation you go iron valiant here because um you know it lives facade from banded and scarf i should know is banded and the moonblast comes out now i don't know I, I might have gone you know zamazenta here or even sneezler here uh to be fair but um you don't know what um because it's not a choice sneezler so you could have easily gone sneezler here and uh 
you know, just click Diaclaw. Like, Diaclaw is the funniest move in the game. You'll see Dragapult come in to resist the poison move and you'll get slept. Like, or you could have just SD'd and um, you would have been in a much uh, better situation. But obviously, um, you can't anticipate the Sneezer's moveset. It could be Endure. So you get your Scarf Latias in, Sneezer's at plus two and you just Endure. Air Balloon breaks and Unburden activates, hence, uh, you know, just outspeed your entire team. So yeah, you kind of have to uh, be careful there. But Roman Moon has done his job. Doesn't really need to do anything else here. And Latias is able to come in and, uh, you know, click the Psychic here. So we're in a pretty good position here because of the fact that Gallade is getting chipped, it can't switch in again. So you can go gouge in here, which is bulky enough to, you know, take any hit that Gallade has as they click uh, Night Slash, which does no damage. So Flare Blitz gets a kill on Gallade and it's a 3v2 here and Styles in a pretty good spot as long as, uh, you know, he doesn't make any blunderous plays. So Dragon Ball comes out because it's going to counter, uh, you know, Zamazenta in one way or another. If it was ID, Body Press, um, you know, uh, you're immune to body press and like you kind of have to have crunch to uh, actually harm Dragapult uh, meaningfully But uh, they go for the Stone Edge crit and uh, at this point I'm just like, you know, obviously Zamazenta outsped Dragapult which means it's Scarf And uh, from here you can actually just uh, go Latias because obviously Latias is not going to get too cured by Stone Edge This guy's kind of bulky. So as you can see 42% Psychic comes out and obviously Zamazenta is bulky enough to take Psychic quite well But unless a crit comes out here um, you know, Styles in a good spot and then, you know, Sneasler, unless he's in Dio, can't really, you know, beat Latias here and the Scarf Latias is able to uh, click Psychic here and win the game. So yeah, it was a pretty short game. I feel like a lot of Monotype uh, games in Gen 9 are not that long, but, you know, there's a lot of plays going on, a lot of mind games and uh, Style.CSS won the mind games. He decided to bring a Dragon team that wasn't running Double Steel because Double Steel is a pretty common uh, archetype on dragon teams where you just run Archaladon and uh, it's you and Gudra and obviously that would amplify your fighting weakness immensely especially the fact that you're also going Roman Moon as well so if you had a Garchomp if you had a Hisui Gudra over Garchomp that would be three fighting weaknesses versus two fighting resists uh, you know I'm counting Dragapult's immunity and Latias' uh, resistance to Psychic so that matchup would have been a lot harder but obviously he made himself less weak to the fighting matchup but obviously not running Hisu and Gujo would make you weaker to Fairy, for example. So it just depends on the way that you're building Mono Dragon to cover certain matchups. And it's not even like Stow was building to make fighting an easier match or, or else he would have not gone Roran Moon. He would have just gone like a D Knight or even double Lati Dragon if he was worried about fighting. But he made his team less weak to fighting, which is the more important thing, you know. But either way, that was the first game of the MPL semis. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of cooler games coming. Mine is going to be on Saturday. Am I going to record it live? We'll see. It's going to be pretty late for me, like it is right now. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff that i got to do. But, um, yeah, I'll try my best to see if I can record my game. But, yeah, this was a fun game to watch. And, uh, you know, style played well. So, yeah, thanks for watching, you guys. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this analysis of this game. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.